during Annie News this time. Super's new unique power and why it counters greed. We got season three, episode three, cut content. Let's get it. With so much happening in such a short amount of time, it's easy to overlook things like Subaru's new power. It's not often he gets new tools added to his arsenal, but with the addition of Beatrice, he's actually developed three. Oh, that's three one of a kind EMM. abilities, completely unique to him. One of which we uh we saw EMM. There was the um uh, like uh other magic where basically it's like uh gravity shit where he kind of like flies for a bit, then he uses the whip to get onto the top, right? What else is there? Actually, got to see an action against yeah, Murak, Regulus. That's the one. This was just a small part in an otherwise grand encounter, so in addition to all the craziness that happened here, I'll also go over the more detailed past involving Garfield and his mother. Everything first, this intense and emotional episode of ReZero left out from the light novels. But first, before we get started... Before we get started, oh, though, got it. allow me to introduce today's sponsor. Yeah, Watch what's your around? Y'all know what to do. Use the discount code hashtag any news to get your free 10 pull in this amazing game. And now back to the real content to the video. Episode 53 Gorgeous got him. Tiger. I got him covering chapters two to four from volume 17 of the light novel. Last week, I had stopped midway through the Amelia and Sirius fight, so to start there, a whole conversation was cut. Before closing out the fight in a blazing flame of rage, Sirius first made clear what she deemed as love. To her- The Wrath? I think Sirius is talking about how, like, the Wrath is something that I deserve, something that he gave me? It was the ideal of many becoming one. The bonds forged by shared feelings allowing everyone to experience another's joy and sadness. This was something Sirius knew Amelia could never obtain herself, but out of innate curiosity to understand it anyway, Amelia still went on to question it. She was truly intrigued enough to confidently ask, what love? This only stirred Sirius' anger more and sent her deeper into another spiral of threats and insults. It had led to the charge that we saw in the anime, and the overall outcome where Regulus would have to save her. Yeah, I, I rewatched the episode last night too, and man, Amelia was about to do it! Like, Amelia truly was about to do it, but then Tina hostage is what just like prevented it all. Amelia should have cut through Tina, but that's never Amelia. She would never do that. Another interesting thing is, Tina kind of just disappears. There's a moment when Regulus and like Sirius is like arguing, and Tina just like disappears. Luzbel said, please save Tina. I wonder what's gonna happen with her. Overall outcome where Regulus would have to save her. If you're wondering why Subaru couldn't do anything- She appears out of nowhere because it's not that she's Pandora. The anime, I think, did a poor adaptation. People are saying where Tina was actually hidden in the, like, the clothing, regular clothing within the series. In the anime, it just looked like she got summoned. But definitely for sure, when, you know, Regulus showed up and Sirius is getting angry and Tina used to be right beside just wrapped up. There's this moment where they even make a specific comment about like, Yo, Tina, where did she go? And, and, and we don't know. We don't know. Thing ...to save her himself. It's because Sirius's authority had taken effect on him. The fear Tina had being Sirius's captive quickly spread in an infinite loop between him, Luzbel, and Beatrice. All three trembled as fear became their entire existence. This paved the path for Regulus to step in instead, leading to an even longer rant about respect. You see, in addition to defining the basics of common courtesy, Regulus also suggested that perhaps Subaru denied his rights on purpose. What? That, or maybe Subaru was just unintelligent. The mental gymnastics. Either way, the argument Regulus made was supported by the same superficial logic as Sirius's. What I mean is that, sure, their remarks may sound reasonable when they're speaking, but that forced rationality was always underpinned by these insane statements nestled within. It was obscenity hidden behind a facade of normalcy. Regulus then went on to directly contest Sirius's idea of love, since her clinging to a dead man was fundamentally flawed. Reason being- Did Betrigus even love Sirius? I don't know. She said that he loved me! He smiled only for me. I stole all his food. He forgave me. I inhaled his air that he exhaled. We even made eye contact multiple times. Did he love her though? Because he only had his sights on the Witch of Envy. And even in this picture, it's pretty funny how he doesn't look as serious, but he looks beyond. He's always just going for the Witch of Envy. 
And that's why Sirius probably really, really hates Amelia, as she probably, like, you know, connects, you know, Amelia as Satala some way or another. Being that, for him, if the person he loved died, then it only made sense to proactively search for another. That was what Regulus believed to be a law of the world, the extent of nature as he knew it. To disobey that made Sirius no different than garbage, and that was a notion- One second, go back? That was what Regulus believed to be a law of the world, the extent of nature as he knew it. To disobey that- No, go back, go back, what is the law? And to directly contest Sirius's idea of love, since her clinging to a dead man was fundamentally flawed. Clinging to a dead Reason man. being that, for him, if the person he loved died, then it only made sense to proactively search for another. And I wonder why they died, because he probably kills them. But isn't Sirius technically searching for another? Now, it's still the same Petra Goose in her mind, right? And she's basically searching, searching. Oh, you returned to me, Subaru! I guess it's not really the same as like a different entire person. That was what Regulus believed to be a law of the world, the extent of nature as he knew it. To disobey that made Sirius no different than garbage, and that was a notion that didn't sit too well with her. So, as she swung her chains out of pure, unrelenting anger, the ones that looked as if they had made direct impact did nothing as they bounced right off of him. Wah, wah. It was as if they were reflecting right off the side of his face. Victor transformation! This made it clear that Regulus had Accelerator. Advantage, which made Subaru worried that he might just kill Sirius. Yeah, and like Subaru- I mean, sorry. Um, wait, why would he care that he kills Sirius? Is Subaru such a good person that he doesn't even want Sirius to die? But Regulus even made a comment that like, come on, come on, like you and I both know you're no match for me. And Sirius didn't really contest that either. So it's, I mean, we also know that Regulus is one of the strongest peoples of this Rezeroverse, right? Even stronger than Sekhmet, isn't he? Like there's very few people that's stronger than him. It would mean the end for him and everyone else. Oh yeah, 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 you're right. Damage sharing. I, f I keep forgetting about that shit. Damage sharing, for sure, for sure. In the square. Luckily, he didn't, but the fear of facing down two archbishops was starting to get overwhelming. If not for Beatrice supporting him every step of the way, then Subaru knew that he wouldn't have been able to do anything. So, it's because she was there and lending him her power that Subaru felt he could stand and actually do something. It was enough motivation to produce a somewhat decent attack on regular. What's gonna happen when Biko's AFK? Is Subaru gonna have the motivation again? I'm not sure. And this... Fucking authority is so quote unquote useless because as soon as you do it, the recoil is too much. I'm not sure if the next time he can just like brute force it. I'm not sure if we can ever overcome this like pain, this sensation of like fatigue. As soon as he used it, he just down for the count. Regulus. Subaru knew that he wouldn't be able to hurt Regulus, but by at least binding him, he thought perhaps he could hinder his movement. And the most fucked up thing is even if you hurt him, he seemingly takes no damage. His neck can get twisted, doesn't matter. He can get shot by like an icicle gigantic thing. It doesn't matter. He just seemingly just... Now, Pandora was there at the same time Regulus was there in the trial. So maybe Pandora was showing us some shit that actually Regulus's powers can't do. I don't know. But he seemingly can't take damage either. Shamak was then supposed to nullify his senses, but just as we saw, it didn't have any effect whatsoever. Yep. It had forced Subaru to use his new special ability, EMM, EMM. The first of three spells jointly developed by him and Beatrice, and the only of its kind to exist in the entire world. The subs basically said it kind of like separates us from the world by half a step. Basically, he's got an iframes, he's like in, like, Maybe it's not the right comparison, but Bluno from One Piece, the door door fruit. It's like he's in like a different realm just for like a bit and he can take like one shot. As an original spell activated through the transfer of mana from Subaru to Beatrice, Subaru would send mana directly from his broken gate, then in return, an invisible magic field would cover his entire body. Okay. The result was an absolute defense which physically cut him from the world itself. It prevented anything from interacting with Subaru whatsoever. Just one time. Just one time so, though, right? Regardless of whether it was a person or thing, any being covered by this invisible field of magic would find themselves removed from the physical plane, albeit temporarily. And it doesn't necessarily have to be just Subaru, right? Because what do we see? It's the transfer of mana that creates this like, I don't know, whatever this like purple like layer is, right? And if you go through it, then you are in this like alternate reality, even though you're still in the same world. You're basically, you know, one step ahead. 
maybe two steps ahead. Anyways, someone else could do it too, maybe. Right? Do you know what I'm saying? So instead of super going through it, he could just simply make this purple ship by transferring mana, and then someone else can go through it. Maybe that's like a different variation of EMM we could use. Thing with Subaru whatsoever. So, regardless of whether it was a person or thing, any being covered by this invisible field of magic would find themselves removed from the physical plane, albeit temporarily. And yeah, not just like this fight, think about utility, passing through like solid objects, walls, different things like a door. We can't go through the seal because the seal doesn't just work like that because uh, it's like a, it's just like a fucking door that leads to somewhere else. But like, yeah, it, this can be probably used to go through, you know, structures. It's what allowed Subaru to dodge Regulus the way that he did. Whereas death was what awaited him had Regulus made contact with him, what happened instead was Subaru completely bypassing him. That was the effect of EMM. Unfortunately, it didn't last very long though as- What happens if EMM gets halted right here? Was what happens? One of the scariest things about like teleportations, and the reason I bring that up is maybe there's some similar thing where you teleport, but let's say you teleport into like wall, like solid object. You just die. You're embedded in that space. If EMM ended here with in Regulus, what happens then? Subaru completely bypassing him. That was the effect of EMM. Unfortunately, it didn't last very long though, as in its current state, one hit was the most that it could cover him for. But there's potential for even more hits if we're better, but probably not this season. That said, it was just enough time for Subaru to land a hit himself. An initial physical punch that was nullified completely, then a secondary invisible punch that had actually landed. The and that's crazy that like Garfield, like look how much impact there is with the punch there. But Regulus, it looked to me that he kind of dodged it, but it did graze his chin, right? Like let's see play by play. Yeah, there's a little impact frame here, but he already just kind of like dodges that shit, kind of like deflects that before. It just did no damage. To hit himself. An initial physical punch that was nullified completely, then a secondary invisible punch that had actually landed. The first physical punch had provided Yeah, for sure, Garfield's weakened. <laughs> Needed a good frame, sorry, Otto. And that's another thing. What's happened with Otto, bro? Last- What? Dude, I rewatched that scene where Lai shows up at the gates, and basically everyone immediately runs away. Otto fucking stays there! He literally stays there and be like, Oh! Who are you? Like, why would you do that? You should have just ran with the other NPCs. You're probably gonna get eaten. Since while Subaru knew that he felt his fist make contact, the lack of damage or any other sign of literally anything happening made it clear Regulus had damage nullification of his own. Yeah. It was as if he existed within his own permanent EMM state. Hmm. The outcome was best. His own EMM state. Now, Any News probably doesn't know because he only reads ahead just enough to cover the anime episodes that has the cut content. His own EMM state, though, that's an interesting thought to think about. ...different when Subaru's invisible providence landed since the force from that had actually gone to stagger Regulus. Okay. Whereas every other attack did absolutely nothing, this one half-baked authority surprisingly did. Oh, that's... Okay! Wow, oh, he did more than Sirius could have. That's... Pretty impressive. Now, what are people thinking when Subaru uses the authority? Because Sirius knew immediately, and Sirius is like, Pet to the goose! What's Regulus thinking? What are they thinking? Like, huh, this random kid has an authority? Why would he have a witch factor? Do, do they not care about things like that? Is it just a common occurrence? Do they just brush it off? Or do they keep that in mind and be like, huh, that's, that's interesting. Like, that kid has, like, a witch factor. What's going on? Now, I know the anime made it seem like Regulus tanked it just like all the others, but by having it directly contrast with the physical punch made immediately before, it makes it clear that this was different. Yes, sir. Somehow Subaru had managed to bypass Regulus's defenses. His One second, guys. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm back! His attack didn't just bounce off like how all the others did. Subaru didn't have time to realize this in the moment though, since his primary focus was saving Amelia. 
because invisible providence came at the cost of go back, go back. the other to bypass Regulus's defenses. His attack didn't just bounce off like how all the others did. Oh yeah, because we've seen time after time, this is a couple examples where if Regulus is not paying attention, or if he can't see, or if he can't like proactively, you know, prepare, then the, the automatic guard, it, it's not an automatic guard. He needs to be conscious of it. Subaru didn't have time to realize this in the moment though, since his primary focus was saving Amelia. Because invisible providence came at the cost of his very soul though, the result of using it began to torment his insides. What does it mean to... Uh, other, other people says like, it damages the soul, it corrupts the soul. The more we use it, the more the soul becomes weakened? It'll break? Is there a potential that he'll actually die from overusing it? Just like how I kid mentioned in the T-Realm where it's just like, this is your soul. If you die here, if your soul dies, you're done. Echidna also like gave us resistance, right? But I don't know if that's specifically with the soul and the witch factor. He, she said that like it stabilized that shit in season two, but... I hate how we get new powers and there's always ways to just like nerf it and there's like reasons on like why we shouldn't use it too much. You see, as a forbidden art that exceeded Subaru's body's capacity, invisible providence corrupted his soul every time he used it. It left his body really in pain and deteriorated the one thing that should never be touched. This was the price of using an authority that was incomplete, and it often What do you mean an authority that's incomplete? Be touched. This was the price of using an authority that was incomplete, and it often left Subaru looking like this. I don't know what an incomplete authority is. Is it because we only have one hand instead of multiple hands? Is this talking about the compatibility issue? Where Subaru is more compatible with the Witch Factor of Sloth than Betragus is? That's why Betragus takes so much fucking damage all the time he uses it. But at the same time, compatibility does not correlate with like the proficiency of the skill. I don't know. In incomplete? What the, f the fuck does that mean? All of this wasn't as useless as you might think it was, though, since this little skirmish revealed crucial information about Regulus. It had showed Subaru that Greed's movements were sluggish. Yeah. If yet to classify it in terms of levels, He's a terrible fighter. Regulus's skills for combat were just above that of a novice. <laughs> I don't know who this is. Um, the three thugs, right? I think Regulus is literally weaker. Someone else mentioned that. Was that Asarata or Jake Z? I, I, Regulus literally doesn't need to fight. Therefore, he's never practiced. So he's an absolute amateur. If he had no authority and wanted to just fight hand to hand, Subaru would win so easily. Like, Subaru himself believed that even he was more competent. To him, Regulus's style of fighting seemed amateur through and through. This provided hope to an otherwise bleak situation since lethal attacks didn't mean anything if they didn't connect. It was a potential weakness Subaru thought maybe he could capitalize on. Okay. With their fight now pretty much done though, Regulus would go on to speak about why he wanted Amelia. Cause she hot. <laughs> Her face is good. But... Apparently he didn't uphold his vow last time, so in accordance with his ideal of seeking out a new partner, Regulus resolved to do so this time. He wasn't gonna yield when it came to living the tranquil life he thought he Now, there is a mention of a word called vow here. ...could capitalize on. With their fight now pretty much done though, Regulus would go on to speak about why he wanted Amelia. Okay. Apparently he didn't uphold his vow last time, so- Uphold his vow last time, but the vow here is being used as a synonym. It's not an actual pact vow, oath, blah, blah, blah. In accordance with his ideal of seeking out a new partner, Regulus resolved to do so this time. He wasn't gonna yield when it came to living the tranquil life he thought he deserved. He would protect and cherish Amelia in his own twisted way and- He would protect her? But I thought so many wives die. And I doubt other people are killing his wives. He would do so just because it was his right to. Everything was also he could maintain his own small slice of happiness. <laughs> If it meant protecting that, then Regulus had no problem exploiting the powers he'd been granted. Okay. So, once again, Subaru was confronted with more twisted logic, but what terrified him more was the conviction with which Regulus spoke it with. For the first time, Subaru felt genuine fear from Regulus. Really? I mean, the absolute conviction that these Archbishops speaks, when they're such just... It sounds insane. But they are insane. And Regulus is one of the most reasonable Archbishops too. And I guess this is what happens when you have that much fucking power. And no one can just like, you know, do anything about you. 
like again, Regulus is basically Subaru if Subaru never was learning from his mistakes and had development. If Subaru ported into the ReZero world and had Regulus's powers, and remember the kid in episode one that jumped in front of a cart or it was like the middle of a street, and Subaru was like, oh, this is my time to activate my cool magic power. Imagine he accidentally killed everyone there and it activated because he actually had those powers. Like, it would have been crazy. And like Subaru with that same the shitty mindset of all the wrong things that he's been doing growing up and no one is there to like, you know, teach him or him forget better. Like, yeah, of course you're going to think this way. There's no one fucking, you know, there to correct you. You are power tripping, you're ego tripping. You've detached any semblance of reality from this world. Who the fuck is anyone going to do to you when you have these powers? Makes a lot of sense why these archbishops are all fucking twisted and insane. It was as if the words he spoke were how he truly felt. This led Subaru to deny Regulus vehemently, stating how Amelia was his bride instead. It wasn't waifu like how the anime translated it. Yome. Dude, some people are so upset about this translation. I thought it was actually kind of funny. The term waifu being used here. I don't know. I feel like this was not like taking away from my experience. In fact, it was just like, damn. It's kind of like, I guess it's kind of like Subaru to say like a fucking earth jargon that doesn't make sense. I don't know. It's funny to me. It, but instead bride, which is a lot more fitting given the context. Now, it was in the meantime that Beatrice was charging up, getting ready to use the third of their original spells. They still didn't know how Regulus's damage nullification worked, but whatever this next attack was, it was apparently very much worth trying. Oh? It was right before Subaru could un- Okay, there's a third one. There's a third attack. Special Biko Subaru attack that we're not gonna see yet. But be aware that there's another technique incoming. Holy shit though that Sirius would intervene and stop him, revealing her passionate interest in who Subaru was now. Before she'd only ever been looking at Amelia and Beatrice, but now she was staring directly Subaru. at him. So, to Subaru, the potential of Romane Conti being this prominent family in the witch cult was always just a joke that he'd only entertain in passing. To find out it was actually a legitimate husband and wife team, well, that was way beyond anything he'd ever expected. So, when the series is my husband, he truly was the husband. This is not delusions from Siri. This is not her gaslighting us and making us think that she's actually married to him. It's, it's they were actually together. It made Sirius's hatred towards Amelia all the more confusing since her ties to Satella should have made her an object of worship. Yeah, right? Because Betrugus worships the Witch of Envy so much. But my interpretation of this scene was that Sirius has an idea of who Amelia is and the Amelia camp. We know that Subaru quote-unquote killed Betrugus after Rental Goa happened. I still think that... Uh, <laughs> Somehow, some way, Better Use is deep inside Subaru and it will come out one day. I, I, I genuinely want that to happen and for it to like be helpful towards us. But if we consider the fact that Subaru quote unquote killed Better Use, Amelia Camp takes the credit, that's a reason for Sirius to hate Amelia. And then beyond that, Amelia's association with the Witch of Envy and how Juice is always, you know, thirsting over the Witch of Envy. Think about how. Uh, Basically, Sirius is getting cucked the entire time because her husband only thirsts for this elf, half-elf. Her desires directly conflicted with what Betelgeuse wanted. Everything came to an end once the noon bell rang, which surprisingly enough, Sirius actually acknowledged. Everyone did. Though she clearly wasn't satisfied with the outcome, whatever was compelling her to move on, it was much more important than her reunion with her beloved. Everyone's got a... She did, however... That's the crazy thing, right? Not only a regular, but Sirius also obeys. They're like, all right, enough beefing. And even though my target is right here, the one I've been searching for so long, all right, the bell rang. I have to listen to the orders no matter what. The Gospels, Pandora's instructions, they're absolute to them. Exit on one final affirmation, once again proclaiming her ideology, except this time mixing parts of Betelgeuse's. Specifically the notion that pain Pain is something about lives, love, I don't forget it. Makes you savor life and life exists so that one can prove their love. One more time. Notion that pain makes you savor life and life exists so that one can prove their love. <laughs> it's pretty fucking twisted, but I guess, yeah, to some supreme masochists they feel that way. So, if love to her is the wish to become one, then this joining of pain was a true expression of it. True. It was a statement that went to challenge Beatrice's own idea of love. 
She, however, retorted with her own example, basically saying how her and Subaru became one long ago, yet by not becoming anything like serious, it was enough to deny everything she stood for. She had essentially stood her ground and rejected the Archbishop in front of her. Beatrice didn't remain focused on that for long, though, as healing was the main priority now. And I guess everyone gets healed too, because they're all under the same authority effect. Unfortunately, Wrath's authority didn't share that healing, so- Never mind! They all die? No, what? Whoa, whoa. If Beatrice wanted to save everyone, then she would have to do so person to person. I thought I was rewatching the scene and I was thinking to myself, like, how are they gonna live? All the people in the village. But then it's like, wait, authority was on. Maybe they all got healed together. No, <laughs> no. Fast forward now to when Subaru wakes up, and aside from retelling the situation to Al and Felix, the only thing worth mentioning is the special condition binding Subaru and Beatrice. As a special type of spirit, Beatrice couldn't accept mana from anyone other than Subaru. Okay. It's a condition that's a- So, not even like a third party object. Like, I was thinking about the mana crystals that we came here for, for Puck, remember? I thought something about that crystal may be able to transfer mana into Biko, but maybe we still can as Subaru himself does it, but mana transfer is specific to Subaru. ...effectively sidelined her since Subaru simply can't supply sufficient amounts of mana. It's the main burden Beatrice constantly has to deal with. This made Subaru... No, because Sirius is gone by the time Beatrice started to healing others, and now doesn't that logic contradict this whole notion of a range? Sirius does not re reside... Uh, 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 what's the word? Sirius does not need to rely on range for her authority to take effect because it's all about like uh, being aware and acknowledging that she exists and the terror that she you could feel through her. Maybe by the time she left because her physical presence wasn't there, people were no longer acknowledging. Subaru's options very limited and provided even fewer ways to navigate this. If we were to look on the bright side though, I guess the only bit of good news was that Beatrice's condition wasn't going to worsen. She just needed help waking up. Something no one present could do right now. Mana! Krush would then arrive to discuss what happened, meeting Subaru in the field hospital since to ask Subaru to come to her would be inappropriate. It's the stage for the meeting that we saw in the anime, which is actually the point where the episode ends. The HQ. The stuff with Garfield happens all the way after, essentially serving as a bit of a flashback. So, to switch gears to that, the best place to start is at the house. It was at this point that Garfield was still uncertain whether this was actually his mother or not. God, Mimi is so cute. The last time he'd seen her was when he was just a baby, and the only reason he was even able to recognize her now was simply due to his vivid trial back in Sanctuary. That made it clear that his mother died searching for their father, so... <laughs> okay, Garfield remembers what his mom looks like to the trial, but Amelia didn't recognize who Regulus was, the, you know, the episode where he showed him Pristella. Father, so, as far as Garf knew, the reunion he truly desired was nothing more than a distant fantasy. To him, this Liara Thompson could not be Alicia Tinsel. She was just someone coincidentally identical. Sure. That's what Garfield wanted to think, but everything about Alicia's behavior indicated otherwise. It was then that Garfield would remember Alicia's past, recounting every tragedy as it happened to her. So, it all started with her family's debt, leading her to be sold to slave traders while still a child. What? Those slave traders were then raided by demi-human bandits, and Licia would then become a slave to them instead. Holy! They would eventually abandon her after she became pregnant with Frederica, leaving her to be paid. The baby daddy jokes aren't fun anymore. The dads are just trash. This is pretty much implied that she was a sex slave, right? Go back? Traders while still a child. Those slave traders were then raided by demi-human bandits, and Licia would then become a slave to them instead. They would eventually abandon her after she became pregnant with Frederica. She got knocked up! Leaving her to be picked up by yet another group of bandits. It was then that she would give birth to Frederica, and that was a time that neither really spoke about. All Garfield knew after was that as soon as Licia became pregnant with him, that's when both her and Frederica fled to safety. It was the move which would result in her inevitable home at Sanctuary. So, this was the misfortune that was Licia's life, at least up until she was adopted by Roswell. <laughs> Roswell adopted her? Also, orange hair, interesting. To him, she was described as both mysterious and incomprehensible, a person who always kept her happiness close. The reason hmm. why was never made clear, but Roswell imagined it was the motivation keeping her going. 
These were the words Roswell shared one night when him, Garp, and Otto were drinking. Garfield's own impression. Would have loved to have a side story where they're all just the boys are at home and they're all drinking with Roswell. Or drinking. Garfield's own impressions were a little bit different though, since for his mother to leave a peaceful place like Sanctuary, well, that just didn't make any sense to him. To find it dad. made her seem like somewhat of an airhead, especially since it was the decision which he thought led to their death. In the end, Garfield still didn't know what his mother was thinking back then, and more importantly, the source of her happiness still remained a mystery. They were burning questions he hoped at least one day he might be able to find an answer to. In any case, with Fred's sister constantly urging Garfield out, he didn't feel welcome until Fred himself said something. The way he came up and grabbed onto his sleeve froze Garfield and filled his head with regret. Gorgeous it tiger, made him question don't leave. why he had even come here to begin with. The nail in the coffin was seeing the mutual love between Liara and her husband, which to Garfield was affection both unmistakable and unbearable. Perhaps it made him feel like he was being robbed of something that was rightfully his. Mm, I thought that he might be happy. That like, finally, there's a husband that's like treating my mom right, but at the end of the day, Garfield, you know, doesn't get any of that. Whatever it was stirring his emotions, the need to run away was so overwhelming that he didn't even realize he was dragging Mimi while doing so. His grip on her wrist was so incredibly tight that when he'd finally stopped, her arm had actually turned blue from it. What the fuck? In the anime, Mimi was basically just left behind and she was catching up, but she was actually getting dragged along? It was then that Gaelic would arrive to ask Garf his question, which would in turn reveal a truth that Garfield had never even considered before. Memory you see, loss. he'd always thought his mother was dead because she'd never returned, so the thought of anything else didn't really occur to him. Knowing now that he was so very wrong to make that assumption, well, that was a harsh truth that really dug into him. Now, it was prior to saying he wasn't related to Liara that there was a swirling torrent of emotion bubbling within him making him feel sick. As soon as he said what he needed to say though, all he felt after was loss and emptiness. The reason why he decided not to say anything was because doing so would only cause more harm than good. Yeah, and the whole family could have some drama because of Garfield now, and you know, he probably doesn't want that. It wouldn't change the fact 15 years were spent with a different family, and it wouldn't change the fact that 15 years were lost as Licia. The only thing it would do is burden her with the guilt of knowing she left behind something precious. Yeah, and now Garfield has to just hold that shit inside. And... I guess never confronted. But here's the thing. Whenever memory shit gets brought upon, right? I'm thinking gluttony. Because, you know, white whale gluttony, you know, memory erasure, name erasure. We don't see any evidences of, you know, gluttony being at the side of the landslide. I still think that it's kind of fucked up how maybe Roswell did that shit intentionally. Who knows? Maybe the Grimar fucking told him to do it. Maybe a kid had different plans. But you can never, you know, write that out of the possibility. Maybe it was gluttony. And if it was gluttony, and if we beat him in this season, then potentially it's not just Rem. It's also, you know, Garfield's mom getting the memories back. So, to put that burden not only on Liara, but also her family too. Well, Garf knew that that wouldn't be fair. His self-satisfaction didn't take priority over any of that. Sure, he alone would be the one to gain closure, but everyone else would go on to suffer. He's a very it selfless was a burden guy. he couldn't share, not even with Frederica or Ryuzu. So, in order to- Tell the new student in class how things work before multiple people get banned. To protect everyone else. Garfield knew the best thing to do was just abandon his own desires and do his best to keep everything to himself. That's really what he wanted to do, but Poor yet again the inner conflict within him was tearing him apart. As much as he wanted to keep all of it inside, Garfield just couldn't find the strength to follow through with it. It was a constant back and forth of him wanting to be the tiger he always thought he was and the true emotion he couldn't keep contained anymore. In the end, his inner thoughts had turned into some pretty deep poetry. Tiger, tiger, where have you gone? What do I look like right now? Stars, moon, sky, won't you tell me? What do I look like right now? You look like a depressed tiger. You look like a crying tiger. It is what it is. That's where I'm going to end today's episode. So if you liked what you saw and want to see more, then... Be yes, sir, I would love to. Now, uh, what's the most interesting thing that happens with the content? Um, the existence of a third technique... 
right? For between Biko and Subaru, we got to learn more in depth about what EMM even is, mana transfer stuff, and potentially other people being able to use EMM. And Subaru, all he has to do is create that like purple field of magic, whatever that shit was. Um, we already knew that Regulus, the details, the corruption part, incomplete authority. I don't know why specifically Subaru authority is incomplete. That's the specific word that, you know, any news uh, said there. And that's pretty much it other than, you know, extra characterization from different details. And I wonder, I wonder, it's just too obvious, right? It's just too obvious. There's something going on with, you know, Garfield's mom with the memory loss. Is it just a random rock, rock slide and she just lost the memories like that? Or did Gluttony do something? I just, it just feels like it's just too, too uh, kind of obvious at this point, but knowing ReZero, you know, they're always, you know, baiting you with the obvious shit, then you get swept from underneath because Nagatsuki Tapi loves doing that shit, but hey, please go give Mr. N News like in the video. Here's the link, and I'll see you next time.